it reflects our life back to us, but in a way that makes us look deeper because it looks it's a little off or a little askew from our actual, you know, an actual naturalism narrative sort of version of the world. The most generous set with the most wonderful like actors, and I think it was it was run with such a kind hand, and so that's not just. The It's an exciting look at the future and the past and the present and uh, American dreams and hopes and aspirations and visions and the calamity that goes with following that kind of optimism. The discovery of the world that the creative team has put together, the production design team led by Jonathan and Twistle really put together a, a masterful uh, group of craftsmen and uh, they, they have transported New Jersey to uh, another world entirely. And uh, it's America, but it's somewhere else too. So it's a, a thrilling and uh, a major effort on their part. And my father was a salesman. There was something that I, I recognized in the script that Ahmet and Lucas had got just right, which is that he's a kind of evangelist for these products and for a better tomorrow. And telling a little piece of hope goes a, a long way in his mind. And that was something I heard a lot growing up. Hello Tomorrow is a story about hope and dreaming of a better tomorrow. I think everyone could relate to that. Herb is a, an eternal optimist, and despite the challenges that he faces, he has a positive attitude, and I love that about him. World building is, some of my, is one of my favorite things to do as an actor, because you get to transport the audience. Completely. When you go on a set where every book, every gadget, ev everything is well thought out meticulously, you couldn't ask for a better playground to explore. Hello Tomorrow is a retro futuristic show about a group of salesmen trying to hawk timeshares on the moon. I think really it's a, a story about dreams and of hope and um, are we good at being present right here in the moment or are we always searching for something more and something better? Um, it's a kick-ass show. It's so much fun. Shirley Stedman, she is the savvy, capable, um, smart, but also heavily flawed accounts manager. Especially me being a black woman and me being a curvy woman and that I'm having this affair and not, I'm not this like, oh, I got it all together. Like, I don't have it together at all. I mean, I'm with an addict, right? Which makes it um, uh, more fun to play because I'm complex. The character is complex. Amid and Lucas, they feel like my brothers, like we all feel like family. We really had a good time with each other and I think because we're a big group of neurotic actors who really care a lot about what we're doing and we care about telling the truth, I think it made the show super special. Eddie Nichols, gambling addict, um, very negative, sarcastic, glass half empty kind of guy. Very in love with his girl though and uh, Although he's about as cynical as you can get, really, and would sell anything to anyone, probably including his own mother, uh, knowing it was fake, he really happens to believe in this moon stuff, which surprised me when I found that out uh, in the script. So it was really fun playing an edgy guy like this. I love Billy. I, he's a friend of mine, and I've been wanting to work with him for years, you know? Had no idea that, um, of this sort of retro future aspect of the show, and I was very surprised by that when I read the script. It's like, that'll be fun. And it's fun to see it come together. It was sort of hard to imagine as we were doing it, but it looks really beautiful on screen. I think Billy's performance is incredible. You know, I'm okay. But I mean, Bill, Billy, really, I think he did an extraordinary job with this. It's really personal to him, this part. It reminds me of his father a lot, who was a similar kind of salesman. So I think he's really extraordinary in it. Hello Tomorrow is the story of Jack Billings, who is a dreamer of phenomenal proportions, uh, whose dreams are so desperate and so potent, they have the power to warp the very reality around him. He's also a salesman, and he'd love to sell you a new home on the moon. Amit and I are long time fascinated with salesmen, and with the idea of a salesman as someone who can inspire, and someone with an incredible tragic quality that embodies something about the American experience. 
This show takes place inside a dream. It takes place inside a dreamy reality that was sold to us about what the future would be. But the drama of the show is about what happens when the shiny sales pitch meets the inevitable lives we have to live. This is a show about people who hope and dream really, really big. And you know, those kinds of dreams, they, they help you get out of bed in the morning, but sometimes they become so big that they change reality itself. And sometimes you find yourself in a much darker place than you may have thought you, you had when you had the dream in the first place. Apple has been so wonderfully supportive from the moment we brought this idea to them and have seen it for what it is for its most original self. And we're very grateful for the support and for them sta standing beside us every minute of the way to, to fulfill the vision of the show. They're one of the only places that's still fighting to tell original stories that break the mold and take big swings. And this was a massive swing that we're so grateful for them to have supported us. Because it's very funny and very, you really connect with the characters, but like all the people are working really hard to get some, get like solve their longing under great obstacles and the stakes just get higher and higher and higher every episode. I feel like uh, it being set in 1950s retro future is, uh, is so exciting, but as opposed to other projects that happen in those exact same uh, scenarios, I think this one follows the lives of the people left behind. So you're following 1950s suburbia, right? But it, there are hover cars and everything. It, it's not the main character. You know, the, the, the robots don't turn evil. We're instead following the human story within that world. I was driving a 1961 T-Bird my first day of shooting, which is the craziest thing. And so that takes care of a lot of it. And once you relax into the world, it's just a scene. It's just you and Billy or Hanifa or Hank or Duchesne or Allison. And in the hands of actors of that caliber, it made my job pretty easy.